Rub up your engines! All right, today I got a GM pickup truck with electrical problems. What a surprise, GMs with electrical problems. They're notorious for it. The guy's taking it to a bunch of places. Nobody can figure out what it is. So, let's start with the basics. Anytime you got an electrical problem, first check the battery. You can see people have been messing with the fuses. We're gonna check the battery. I test the battery, battery tester. But I'm gonna show you something that kind of adds to the insanity of GM. They came up with these stupid side post batteries, right? Instead of having nice big battery terminals coming off the battery with big mail parts, and then the big cables clamp on them, they got these stupid little side terminals that screw in the side that have a much smaller space where there's contact for the electricity. And that means one thing, with less contact area on these stupid side terminals, any short, Looseness, corrosion will impact the electrical system of the cars up the wazoo. I fixed many of these merely by taking the terminals off and either replacing them if they were corroded or cleaning them all up and getting them on super tight. But we're going to check the battery first. This is a 650 cold crank amp, so do a battery health test. Regular flooded. It's seeing if there's any floating electricity. So we're going by cold cranking amps, and it's uh, 650. The sliding thing could use a little perfection. It's very hard to get them perfect. Well, 649 is close enough. Next, now it's testing. And it says it's 51%. Battery is normal, but it needs charging. Now, it drives this thing every day, so it should charge itself. So now we're gonna have to check the alternator to make sure it's charging the battery. So we'll go to the start system test, turn everything off, stop the engine, start it. Here we go, starting it up. Check the alternator. Charging voltage is high, 14.91 volts. Diode ripple is normal, but the charging voltage is high. Now, sometimes a bad battery will cause the alternator to charge it too much, but our machine shows that the battery is good, but it needs recharge. It may sound like an anomaly, but it isn't because an alternator that's putting out too much voltage will change everything. It might put out too much voltage, not enough amps, so that even though it's getting voltage, it's not getting enough amps, so the battery isn't fully charged. In this case, the only logical thing to do is to replace the alternator. That's in the way, so we gotta move all the plastic crap so we can get to the adjuster to get the belt off to change the alternator. So, we'll get this crap out of the way and see what we can see. Now, as you can see, the oddly pulley's there, so with the cheater bar, you can see it loosens the belt. Now we have a naked alternator. We'll take the battery terminal off first and then take it off. Bolt the wires, take the two bolts off, and once we take the bolts off, up comes the alternator. I think I'm stronger than I am. Well, we'll get a pry bar. Da -de -da. There we go. Now it comes off. There's a trick. You'll see down here, these little spacers are in. That's why it was hard to get off. So you get yourself a hammer. See how it moved? See how it moved a little? And now you can see the alternator just falls in place. We don't have to wedge it anymore because the spacer went in. As we tighten it, it'll tighten up. Don't freak out about sliding it in. Once you put those in, see, it just slides right in. The bolts slide in, you don't have to wedge it and pry it. They go right in. Get them on nice and snug, because when you get to the end, it'll then squeeze that washer in and make it tight. They make them really long. Here we go. Now, it's squeezing against this. There. Now it's tight, we do the other side. Then we'll put the power line on, 10 millimeter. That's snug, plug the socket in here. There we go. Then we pull on our big old cheater bar. We can bit the fan belt, come off the bottom. So we have to refasten things. Every time you do this, you're gonna find belts slide all over the place. So you gotta make sure they're all lined up before you start putting them on. Cause if they aren't lined up, it'll never work. Now I got them lined up. And you'll see the belt then goes right on and that comes off. And before you're done, make sure all the belt lines up with all the grooves. And then put the terminal back on that you took off so nothing shorted out. And of course, put the air duct back on or it won't run right. Make sure it's got a tight seal now. You don't want any air leaks. They went nice and snug. Now the other side. That's snug. Then we tighten them up. We'll try the giant screwdriver. It actually fits. You don't need a giant screwdriver, but I got one lying around, so might as well just use it. That's tight. Now we'll do the other side. Both sides tight. You don't want any air leaks. And we go testing the alternator over, the new alternator. And now it's charging perfectly fine. The alternator was bad. It was putting out too much voltage, but not enough amperage. But if you look closely, 
You'll see one thing. That's not the original alternator I put on. The original one was AutoZone. This one came from Advanced Autos. Even though it said on the AutoZone rebuilt in Mexico alternator, triple tested, it put out zero volts when I put it on. So I did the whole job over again. And I went to the store and I said, what's up? I'm a shop, right? I said, do you pay labor? Well, you'll have to talk to the manager for that, the guy said. I said, well, fine, get the manager. Well, he's not in now. And then when I left, the guy says, oh, hey, don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> now, realize this. I moved from Texas to Tennessee about a couple of years ago. This auto zone is just down the street, right? There's not a single guy there that was here like a year and three quarters, two years ago. They have such a turnover employees. The other guys knew who I was and they treated me kindly. These guys, they don't know anything. They're rude. They sell you a part that puts out zero volts. And then they had the audacity of putting it on their machine and saying on their machine, oh, it worked perfectly fine. Well, <laughs> it did not. It put out zero volts. Now, I mean the original alternator on this thing put out too many volts. Not enough amps and too much volts. But it was putting out almost 15 volts. Theirs put out zero volts. Obviously, it wasn't working. This is the advanced auto part one. And you see it works perfectly fine. Doesn't have any problems. I kind of peed off at those guys at AutoZone. One, they treated me like dirt. And two, they sold me a crappy part for 120 bucks that put out zero volts. And then they even denied. They said, oh, we put on a machine, tested it, it's fine. Either they don't operate the machine or the machine doesn't work because it put out zero volts. And this one is working perfectly fine from advanced auto. So be leery about where you buy alternators. And really, this is an old vehicle with a lot of miles on it. Probably would have been better mine to $295 brand new one instead of the rebuilt one which the next time somebody does I'll just say hey buy a new one I'll put it on but I'm not going to put a rebuilt one on I won't deal with that anymore didn't last 10 seconds zero volts uh, hopefully this one will but it's from advance it's a different company we'll see time will tell but be leery if you want to keep a car for a long time take my advice don't buy the remanufactured one buy a brand new one you're going to pay more than twice as much but then probably you won't have problems at all. It's brand new. It's not something that was rebuilt in Mexico. You know, what does that mean? In this case, the AutoZone rebuilt in Mexico had zero volts, so it was working 0%. So live and learn, people. You can learn from my mistakes. Don't make them yourself because you just saw me made one buying the AutoZone part. Don't do that. Buy a quality part. If, like I say, you don't care too much about the price difference, buy a new alternator instead of a rebuilt one. And here's some bonus questions and answers. See, Honda Sites GM says, why do some OEMs make crappy engines? When will GM, Kia, and Dodge learn from their engine problems? I have a 2011 Honda Accord that hit 200,000 miles. It's never been touched on the engine. It runs great. They're too into short-term profits, making things as cheap as they can. GM has had histories of problems the last two or three decades because they want to make things as cheap as they possibly can. Kia. And the, all the Korean car manufacturers have always built their cars somewhat cheaper. And when you make things cheaper, the one thing you don't want to make cheaper is the engine. Height tolerance is metal, revving at 4,000 RPM. You screw up on one little thing, boom goes the engine. And that's why they go. And Dodge, of course, well, it doesn't even exist anymore. Chrysler got bought out by Fiat. And now Peugeot owns them. And they call themselves Stellantis. A lot of the Dodges. <laughs> Fiat engines. Italian engines. Yeah. Even their jeepy ones. You get one with the diesel engine. It's an Italian diesel engine. They blow up all the time. The first generation Italian diesel blew up. The second one did. Now they're on the third. And we'll see. They'll probably blow up too. They don't care is the reason. They want to make money selling crap to people and they don't care. They could build them any way they wanted. They don't want to spend the money. That's all it comes down to. The Japanese, they just perfect their stuff over time. Where a lot of the other companies, they just try something that didn't work out. They throw it away. Let's try something else. Instead of increasing incrementally making them better, they're dramatically making them worse because they want to make them cheaper so they can make more profit. DJ Hawkster says, what tent did you use in your pop-up tent video? You had that video where you show the portable tent garages. Can someone show me where this came from? All right, well, I got it on Amazon. It was about 500 bucks. I did a bunch of research. I don't remember the name. If you watch the video, you can see. It came shipped to me from the West Coast. Of course, it was made in China. They're all made in China. But I did all kinds of research, and I bought a previous tent that ripped because it was made like crap. This one, you're better paying the 500 bucks than buying the $350 one if you plan on using it for any length of time. The cheaper ones are exactly that. 
cheaper. This has stronger grommets. It's tight. The previous one ripped because it sagged when it rained because the canvas was cheap. It sagged, the water built up in it, and then it ended up ripping it apart. This one has a stronger base that whatever they're using, nylon, whatever material they use, it's thicker. And when you put it up, it's tight and it does not sag. So I don't foresee any problems with this one. But you really are better to spend the 500 something bucks than you are buying the 350 if it's something you want to use a lot because otherwise it'll just rip after you use it a few times because the other ones are just too cheaply made. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.